We're coming into flight time. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> This is the digs, um, wow. basically just a huge warehouse and we can become chameleon-like and kind of make it whatever you want it to be. Yeah. And we were talking in the interview about, you know, the wallpaper and stuff. But one of the things is we actually resisted for the longest time actually putting anything on the walls. Yeah. Because we didn't want to, you know, kind of rest on our laurels and go, oh, we did all this. It was kind of like, no, let's fill it up with some new stuff. Let's leave the walls bare yeah. and fill it up. Um, and then we finally got comfortable with it. Um, and we can look at it now and it's, it's nice to have. Um, but, uh, you know, we always like look forward to the new stuff. Of course, nowadays they give you stuff, but it doesn't really look like We've been through all of it, right? So yeah. now there's records up there, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's like vinyl, like gold albums. Yeah. And then uh, and then some of them are like cassettes when it changed to cassettes, and then some of them are CDs as it changed to CDs. Now it's just like a plaque, and it says you know whatever it says on it. Just art. Well, yeah, yeah, some sort of art, but it's, there's not an actual physical uh, delivery system anymore. Yeah. Like Gwen. Yeah, like yeah, Gwen. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, Gwen, yeah. Well, Gwen, Gwen was CDs oh, back yeah. in the CD day. Oh yeah. Um, but we just got one for um, for her. The artist oh, her. Yeah. We just got a huge one for. I don't even think we, we haven't even hung it yet. I think yeah. it's still in the box. But we got one for her, and um, I don't think there's records or anything on it. I, there's a whole bunch of decorated stuff, but yeah. not a physical delivery system. <laughs> yeah, on it. and it's giant. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but at least they were nice enough to do it. I mean, nowadays you have you, you know, they'll tell you, oh, your record, your record's gold, your record's platinum. Yeah. And it's like, okay, but nobody sends it to you anymore. Right. <laughs> it's right, like right. you got to go buy it and now. Some, you know? Yeah. Exactly. They're like, do would you like one? It's four hundred and eighty yeah, dollars. Yeah. But there's all kind of like really kind of funny stuff. So that there's like, so NBA on Showtime, because we did uh, uh, Showtime uh, NBA because we love the NBA so much, and so they gave us this machine because uh, we did a bunch of music for the NBA. So cool. Space Jam, we did movie uh, music for the original Space Jam. Wow. So we had that you know that machine for that, and Madden was just because that was everybody's favorite game. Yes. All the artifacts in here are different things, like on the uh, Jam and Lewis album cover. Yeah, this is the uh, the guitar for for that. Wow! And this had actually gone to the Songwriters Hall of Fame uh, for a while, and then I called Roland and I wanted to get another one, and they didn't have any more. <laughs> yeah, because it's a limited edition with the all black keys, and so. I said, uh, "Can I have that one back?" And then I sent them. I sent them a different yeah, one. Yeah, send them the replica. Uh, yeah, I sent them a different one because I needed. You're like, yeah, you can still keep the same badge exactly. on there. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's and this is the one I think uh, when I performed on the Grammys a while while back, and they strapped with the time when you did that with the time, yeah. yeah. And so that's the one from that. And then there, we I have a purple one that we did for the Prince special. That one is at uh, that one's at the Rock Hall. Nice. In Cleveland. Nice. It's all it was all purple. So cool. And stuff. So, you know, having that kind of stuff is kind of cool. This piano here, and it's going to be out of tune because it never gets played. This is a CP70. When I got my first apartment, I didn't have enough room for like a real grand piano. Yeah. So I got this one and the song that I wrote on it, and we actually used um, this to record the song was, uh, it's not gonna sound right because I don't have a sustain pedal, but it goes like this. Wow. And this was the actual piano. When you hear the wow. record, this is the actual piano that played it. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was the CP70. It's got chills. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's some fun stuff like that. Um, it's so cool to to like after hearing that record so many times to see you play it. Oh yeah, yeah. Out of you, I I I, wow. I, I, I hear people play it all the time and they're kind of they're close. Yeah, it's never quite exactly right, but they they get it. Yeah, pretty close. They they make it more complicated than it really is. Yeah, I play really simply, and part of that is because Terry would always say. I like when you do chords where even though it's two different chords, you're maybe only moving one note. Mm. He always likes the kind of the subtlety of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the way I would always think when I was when I was playing stuff. So cool. Yeah. So let's see what else we got that's interesting here. Um, so we worked with Chaka Khan and we actually um, won a Grammy for uh, R&B album of the year, uh, but. 
Terry loves Las Vegas. So <laughs> Chaka Khan gave this to Terry <laughs> as a birthday present uh, one year. This is, this is a while back, though, when we were still at our place in Santa Monica. She gave him this. And it actually works. It's not plugged in, but it actually works and stuff. I don't want to break it. Terry loves it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. No, Terry, Terry loves it. And uh, it's so cool. It's so cool. So cool. And my wife gave me this Coke machine when we first got together. My wife is the best gift giver ever. And I used to love Coke. I, I don't anymore. I mean, I still love the Coke. It's fine. I just, yeah. for health reasons. Right. I just don't drink a lot of it anymore. But it was the weirdest thing. So our first like Christmas together, all of a sudden, I remember the truck bringing this big thing and there was a big ribbon on it and stuff. And I was like, what is this? And it's a Coke machine. And it actually worked and it was filled with Coke and we had it plugged in. That's and all deal. It was what a great present. I was like, my wife is amazing. That's her love language, huh? The, gift oh, giving? Oh, she's... She's the best. Are you a good gift giver back to her? You, not, you, not on that level. No, on that level. <laughs> no. My gift giving is, what is it that you, just let me know what you want, or just give me a list and, you What's know, what your, you What want. is your love? Yeah, what do, you, what do yeah, you give? Yeah. What do you give? What do I give? The words about I give, no, no, no my, no, my gift giving really is, what is it that you like? Acts of service, probably. Uh, is that because the service is giving it, giving her what she wants? Yeah, or I guess. Or just asking her what gift she wants, then I just it ask, that's, that's, that's more what it is. Matter of fact, I realized, that was the thing that I realized about um, during, during the, sort of the COVID lockdown. Yeah. Was that one part of my life really changed a lot, and it was the concierge part of my life. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that so much of my life was between my wife and my kids, can you give me tickets to this? Can you get me into this restaurant? Can you book this? Can you do that? And that's, I used to do that. And I, I'm perfectly fine doing it. But I realized for a while, I didn't have to do any of that. Yeah. And then I knew when things were getting a little safer, that's when all of a sudden I started getting the, hey, can you get a six to this? Can you, and it was like, oh, I remember this. I'm this is normal is back. <laughs> normal is back. I'm the concierge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why you're giving the access. Yeah, exactly. No, it's all, it's all good. I, you know, Richard Dreyfuss, the actor, said one time, and I love this, he said that the best, or the, the way that you want to be famous, or his amount of famousness, is he said, you can get a good seat at a restaurant, or you can get into a restaurant, but then you actually don't get bothered during your meal. Yeah. And Walking think, that line. Yes. And I think that's kind of, in some way, that's kind of where it is for, for us. We can get into good places. But then we don't really get, want to get bothered, and I don't. I have never feel it's a bother when yeah. I'm out and people come up and say because people are so respectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not. And it's different than being like I couldn't imagine being like a, like a real star, mm. where people come up to you and it's like, oh my god, oh my god, like panic. Yeah, 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 yeah. that doesn't really work. Yeah. But people come up and they'll just go, hey, I like what you do. It's like thank you. Yeah. I pre. I like. I like. Them. Yeah, yeah. That's it's respectful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's respectful. So I love that. Um. This is kind of cool. So this is my very first synthesizer. No way. That I ever had in my whole life. It's a Roland SH-1000. And a funny story here was Roland gave us a uh, Lifetime Achievement Award a while back, probably six, seven years ago, I think it was. And I actually brought this. Now it wasn't in this good a shape when I brought it. It was all kind of beat up. But I brought it as an example when you say Lifetime Achievement. This was literally my first synthesizer that I had, and we're talking back like 1978, probably, I think, probably around wow. that time, 77, 78, around that time. And so, um, anyway, they took it and refurbished it and, and did all that. But what they did is they, they put a new, a new, you know, nice back on it. Yeah. But the original back, I said, what did you guys do with the original back? And they sent it to me. So this was the original back, Whoa. and this was the band I played with yes. in called Mind and Matter, back in Minneapolis. So this was the original back. That was your like big band, right? Or there was that yeah, well, I had, band, yeah, like it was a like large, a seven, large seven eight ensemble. piece band yeah, yeah, yeah. with uh, four singers. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we was like you know we were basically doing like Philadelphia sound, but with synthesizers. It was wow. kind of the wow. kind of the idea. Um, That's the synth. But this is the synth, and uh, and if you if you go on YouTube, unfortunately, if you go on YouTube, there is. Um, uh, there's a company called Numero Group mm -hmm. that did a, uh, an album that's called, um, I think it's called Purple Snow. 
Mm. And it's basically forecasting the, Minis the Minneapolis sound. And it's kind of all the things that happened before Prince happened. Yeah. So my band was one of those things that happened before Prince. And they have a show that we did at Uncle Sam's, which is now First Avenue. And I literally had this, I had pegs on it, and I had it around my neck like a keytar. Wow. And I couldn't afford wow. a keytar. So you this turned is what this I into used. a keytar. Yeah, and f feel how heavy this is, by the way. Oh, that is not <laughs> a keytar. That is four keytars. Is that crazy yeah. or what? Wow. Yeah, so anyway. But that was, that was kind of... <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> that was the deal. So I, I'm hopping around with, a, you know, with this thing around my neck and stuff. Jeez. Um, and then we have like all the keyboards that are here, as I think I mentioned in the interview, we would, for different sounds and different people, we would use different keyboards and stuff. So basically this is all the different keyboards we used over the years. Uh, probably most prominently the Mirage, because this is all the, the, we had two of these, but all the, all the Janet Jackson stuff, the piano on When I Think of You, yeah. um, those horn stabs on, on that song. Uh, this sounds on Nasty. Yeah. All came from this keyboard. No way. Well, either this one or this one, because they're, identi they're identical keyboards, and we had two of them. The company that made it in Sonic, they were so happy that we mentioned in Sonic in a keyboard uh, interview that we did, that they sent us everything that they, <laughs> whenever they came out <laughs> with the keyboard, mention, they yeah. Sent, yeah. It was great. Uh, this DX7, this is actually the DX7 that the bass line on When I Think of You was played on no this. Way. A lot of the Alexander O'Neill stuff. Wow. Um, Saturday Love, there's a little part, uh, like a little vibey part that goes boop, 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 kind of yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. That was all done on that. Um, wow, you've had these, you've carried these with you this whole time. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah, yeah. No, we still have them. And they all, they all work. They're all in, in working order. The D70 and Sonic. There's the, the Roland D50, which was a pretty revolutionary keyboard. A lot of like the Ralph Tresvant uh, sensitivity and that kind of stuff, the kind of softer stuff was done on that. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, it's a kind of a kind of a whole thing. And then my friend Charlie Jam. So <laughs> so, so Charlie Jam happened. Now he's a little worse for wear cuz he's been sit he's been sitting outside for about 10 years and he we finally brought him in. He was outside? Yeah, he was outside. And he was built to be outside. Uh, they did uh, Charles Schultz who did the uh, Snoopy cartoon. Yeah from the Twin Cities. Oh, no way. And they did a, a whole thing called... Uh, Even got the hair. It's oh, like yeah, got the, got the, yeah. Got the hair. hair. Oh, no, they really did a great job. And we had to get permission for them to use the Grammy. Yep, of they, course. <laughs> um, you knew a guy, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they did really great. And, and the shoes, they did a great job on the shoes. Yeah. But it's a lot of detail. Anyway, the company that made this is actually located in the Twin Cities. Wow. And they asked us, they said, can we do a commission, you know, one of these for you? And we said, yeah. And so it sat outside for about a year and everybody could come look at it and then they brought it to us. So it sat outside in our yard for the longest time. And we finally, we were going to get it refurbished and, and, and stuff and get it rebuilt, but, uh, but it was cool. It was, it was, it's Wait, outside funny. Minneapolis outside? Outside of oh, Minneapolis. Oh, that's a whole other yes, weather. Sir. Yes, It's yes, <laughs> yeah, a yeah, whole yeah. other weather. Yeah, <laughs> and, we had, and we had it shipped out here and it's super heavy. It's on, a, it's on a, a concrete base. It takes like four or five people to move. Wow. But, uh, but yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, the time drum set is from uh, we, when we did our Las Vegas residency um, around, uh, let's see, when was it? 2004-ish, I want to say. Because our kids were, no, maybe 2005 or 2006. Because I remember our kids would come on stage every night and do the bird with us. Really? Which was kind of cool. That's really cool. They came to every concert. They never missed no a concert. No way. Uh, that's so fun. 2000, 2008. 2008. That's so fun. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Still got the stock heads on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, DW, the guy, I can't remember his name, but the, the, the DW guy actually was friends with my father-in-law. I saw him and I, and I said, hey, we're playing, we're getting ready to play Vegas. And he said, oh, I'll build you a set. And this is what he built. This is it's, gorgeous. It's yeah. It's, <laughs> it's so it's, beautiful. It's gorgeous. Uh, Jellybean Johnson, his original drums, though, from back in the time days. Yeah. Pearl. He was a pro. Oh, he was a pro guy. He was a pro guy. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Did Jelly Bean do the uh, residency? Yes. Nice. The, all the He's left-handed, right? All the, yes. Yeah. All the, all the original guys. Yeah. That's so cool. Oh, it was, it was the seven. The, the original yeah, seven. Yeah, the original seven. Yeah, it was, so all, cool. it was all the guys. But we had played, we played the Grammys with Rihanna. Oh, yeah. And I saw that. And it was 50th anniversary. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, I was yeah. a chairman at the time. And Ken Ehrlich came up with the idea. He said, there's never been a chairman perform on the Grammy. That's cool. So we want you to do it. And I said, okay. 
he said, come out like you've given a speech, and then he was going to come out and put a keytar around your neck. Uh, and that's how we ended up doing dude, it. Dude, that's the hippest. And it was great because my kids were there. They got to just watch it. The funny thing was we had no plans after that. We just basically did the performance. Yeah. And then that was it. And then they said, what are you going to do? And we said, we don't know. And then Vegas called and said, hey, come do residency. Do that. We said, okay. That's so, so we did. fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. That's so fun. This piano here, this has been in the uh, family for, oh, 40-some years probably. So we were buying it. We thought we were buying a C7 uh, Yamaha. Yeah. And uh, after we got everything, after we got the piano, uh, we had a guy come over who was like an expert to take a look at it. And he said to us, he looks at it and he goes, yeah, he said, this isn't a C7. And we said, oh, no, somebody sold us like a counterfeit piano. And he said, no, he said, actually, what this is, is a S400. And we said, what does that mean? And he says, this is a, like a special version of the C7. Really? Very limited edition. And I can't remember what we bought it for, but he said, whatever you bought it for, it was an absolute steal. Wow. He said, they thought, he said, whatever they had, because I said it was probably in somebody's basement back yeah, in those yeah. days. And I said, they said they must have not known what they had. And I remember talking to a Yamaha guy probably in the last two or three years. And I mentioned, I said, yeah, we have an S400. And he said, oh, my God, that's like the piano. Wow. So anyway, this has been in the, in the family for a while. Now, one of the things we did with this is we doctored the hammers, meaning we made the hammers hard. And the reason was in the, in the uh, analog recording days, Whenever you put high end on something, you mm -hmm. also brought up the hiss mm -hmm. of the analog thing. So the idea was to make the piano as bright as it could possibly be so that you wouldn't have to EQ it. Yeah. So the first song we did on this piano when we got it, which was, uh, let's see, 93, was this? But anyway, that was that was the first wow. one we did. Wow, this and, piano sounds insane. Right. Well, yeah. it sounds it sounds like the record. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I I can sit down at a piano and play it, but when I play it on this piano, it sounds like the record because it had such a specialized sound. The other thing the other thing we did was we had this mid this MIDI mod done, and it was the first. This was the first version of it that they did. So we also had an OB-8 yeah. work, you know, along with it, MIDI. So when you hear the first notes of again, it's basically this piano along with an OB-8, which is actually I have upstairs. Layered on it. And that's the thing. That's, that's so cool. You. And so then, um, and then another song we did on it was the one that goes like this. Uh, let me do that again. Take two. <laughs> So anyway, anytime you hear an acoustic piano on a Jam and Lewis record, <laughs> this is the this is the piano. piano. This is the piano. Wow. Yeah. So we did a whole lot. Of Epic. That. Yeah. So it's cool. So it's part of the family. It's wow. Been there. So a couple other things from back from back in that day. Of course, as a kid, oh my, my thing was always the first of all, it was always the clavinet with the Rhodes. Yeah. That combination. Yes. From Stevie Wonder to Billy Preston to whatever, like that was the the combination. So I finally got it. It took a while to get, but we actually finally got that combination. Incredible. Of stuff, right? So that was always my dream. And then the Lindrum. So the Lindrum, this is the Lindrum. This is the control Lindrum. No. Yeah. So control. Way. New edition, like all that. So we, we talk about the do 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 yes. do do all that. It was this. That was this. Yeah. And a lot of times it would be like, <laughs> a lot of times it would be like, literally we'd put the sound in. And then like on, on uh, I'll tell you a funny one is control. So control, on the courses of control, the snare hits on the two and the four. Yeah. That was never programmed. What happened was on the course of the song, I would just hit the snare on the two and the four because that was the course of the song. Yeah. But on the rest of it, it would just kind of stop without a, 
a snare on the two and the four. Insane! I can't believe it. it looks perfect still. Yeah, no, it's it's in good shape. Wow, all of the all of everything is. And then the eight oh eight, of course, yes. the famous eight oh eight. So tons of uh, records done on that. My God. Um, and this was another one that when we did uh, when Roland gave us a Lifetime Achievement Award, I brought we brought our original eight oh eight. And uh, they first they laughed because they said, "Oh, you still have like the yeah, like, right, the thing on it." And I was like, "Yeah, because we just we just never took it off." And when it went over to Japan, they refurbished it, and uh, the guy said, uh, "Wait, whose machine is this? These, the patterns in here are amazing." Yeah, and they said, oh, it's, that's Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis's machine, and they were like, "Oh my god!" And then they're like, "Wait, wait, wait!" Well, yeah, wait, wait. I want to yeah, keep listening. Save those, save those, yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty cool. These patterns are amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be hits. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. Wow, but everything dude. Still, but everything still works, you know. Um, and then we just, you know, we just enjoy it. It's like having the tools. It's like yeah, we know yeah. how to use them. It's nice to have them. But it gives us variety. And each instrument to me gives us different um, inspiration, yeah. so to speak. And one of, the, one of my favorite things that happened in the last year was Synthplex last year I went to. Yeah. And I had never met Tom Oberheim in my life. Yeah. And I'd never met uh, Roger Lynn in my life. And they were both there. They were both there. Same day. Amazing. And Marcus Ryle, who works for Oberheim, uh, he introduced us. He said, uh, he said, they're both going to be here. I'll introduce you. And what I did got, they say to you? Well, they were just, they were really happy to meet me. But what was cool was, uh, I'll actually send you, uh, he, Marcus actually filmed yeah. when we, when I met Tom, because we had a long conversation. Yeah. But he actually filmed it, which was pretty cool. But the but the nicest thing was being able to tell them yeah. how influential they were. Oh my God! In our life, in our creative life, hundred percent. How they were the you know the foundation, and we talked about a lot about foundation, but the foundation of our musical yeah. experience. And um, and it was the week before the Rock Hall. Mm. So when I met Tom, I actually had a a, t a Rock Hall T-shirt, and I gave him a Rock Hall T-shirt, and I said. We're going in the Rock Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I just want to let you know that your machine, your o, one of your OB-8s and one of your DMX drum machines that yeah. we used is going to the Rock Hall so in cool. Cleveland. And his daughter was there, and his daughter was like, oh, that's so cool, that's great. You know, so I said, and so it was just cool to, for him to experience that and for me to be able to express that to him. And then Roger Lynn the same way. Wow. Just to talk about how influential not only on us but also on prince yeah obviously yeah, yeah. the lindrum was and if you talk oh, about the minneapolis sound it's the lindrum and the ob8 yeah, synthesizer yeah, yeah. the oberheim synthesizer so i don't know that that was but a also great for thing. them to hear what you created with their tools yeah it's like it's both ways you know i'm sure like to you i mean they it's like you created your sound with their tools, but they, so they had a touch of your of your sound you yes. know like but you created it it's like they collabed with you yeah. without them even in, or directly knowing that they were going to do that. The other thing that was kind of yeah. funny, too, was because that at, at, at Synthplex, of course, it's just it's a nerd fest, yeah. right? So uh, it was really cool because there's a guy named uh, Far is his last name. I can't remember his first name. But the sound on the OB-8 that's my favorite sound, it's kind of my basis for a lot of things, is, was C7, right? That was the preset, right? And on the new version, on the OBX8, it's called a Fars Funk. Mm. Is what it's called, right? And I remember putting that sound in, and I and Marcus Ryle, who works for Oberheim, I said, "Who's Far?" And he told me the whole story about this dude that came up with this sound. And I think he's still alive. And I think we were trying to find him so I could call him and just yeah. say to him, "Dude, this is my sound. Yeah, <laughs> this is the sound. This is the basis of everything." You know, they made that synthesizer. We so gotta find him. Amazing. Yeah, we gotta find him. I know I know Marcus is the one that knows. Marcus is the and Marcus was the one, it was funny, I got to tell Marcus. Marcus, when they came up with what was called the system for Oberheim, which was the OB well, I think it started off with the OB eight or maybe the OBX, it might have started with the OBX synthesizer, the DMX drum machine, but then there was a sequencer called a DSX. Mm -hmm. And those three things together were called the system. And the group called the system that had You're In My System, that yep. song, that's what they used to record. Wow. But I said to Marcus, well, the funny thing, Marcus, is 
I, the sequencer is a thing I never used. And he said, yeah, because you didn't need it. And I said, yeah. I just, I never came, so I never just used playing. it. I just would play. Yeah. I'd put a beat in and then I'd just play along with it. But he got a kick out of that. He thought that was pretty funny. And Roger, was, and, and, and uh, Tom Oberheim got a kick. He I can only laugh. imagine that they he must laughed. have been like, you're the only person to, <laughs> oh, he to be that proficient that way. Oh, he, la he they yeah. laughed. They cracked up. They thought that was so funny. But, so cool. Uh, anyway, but yeah, I mean, you know, and there's tons of, Tons of junk and tons of stuff, but I mean, it all has a story and it yeah. all has, you know, something relevant for us. So yeah. it's a great, it's a great creative space, you know. I love all the, uh, <laughs> the PMI, or the, is those. Oh yeah, ASCAP Awards. The ASCAP Awards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the funny thing, and that, that's not all of them. Um, oh yeah, you have, it feels like 50, well, right? Here's the, well, here's the thing. We have, the ASCAP Awards, we actually probably have probably 150 or Probably now, probably close to 200, I would say. Oh my God. At this point. Um, but uh, the guy that hung all these, we said, he, he had a little bit of a job. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And we told him, we said, why don't you just put it all on one thing and then just attach it to the wall? But he wanted to. Uh, Do we join? Yeah. <laughs> Make them straight? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, they're, they're sort of straight, but you know, earthquakes and all kinds straight of things. Straight enough, yeah. Straight yeah. enough. Yeah, it looks cool. But the funny thing is, so in the back there, if you look at the. Uh, the shelf, yeah. there's tons more over there that oh, haven't even made the wall. Yeah, yeah, you got hundreds. Right? Yeah, this is, so they haven't even made the wall. So they're there. So we have, we have room for, for a few more things to go up, I guess. But You're uh, going to have to fill the cracks in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it's cool. Amazing. Yeah. And then up these stairs. Wow. So this is the, <laughs> this is the laboratory here. This feels like Minneapolis. Yeah, totally. Wow. Totally. So this is, you know, the mix of the analog stuff. Um, my, I'm a logic guy, so all the logic stuff's in, in here. But that's the OB-8 from the back in the time days, back in the uh, Unbelievable. stuff. Um, the OB-2, which is uh, actually, uh, Tom actually signed that for me. Wow. And this was the last one made because when he had, they had already run, done their run of them, limited. They had done the run of them. Uh, and then I called, uh, actually Marcus, and I just said, Marcus, I said, did I miss the run of the Oberheims? And he said, yeah, they're all sold out. I said, damn, I, I wanted to get one. He said, let me call Tom and see. So Tom said, oh, Jimmy Jam, he said, yeah, I got enough spare parts, I can probably make him one. Wow. And so, so, so that's sick. what they ended up doing. And I then, love that you have an OB-8 that you've been using for 40 years. Yeah, I know, absolutely. Well, I have it's still it's just, it's your creation. But it's the, like, but it's the best of both worlds because we have the OB8 here, but then we have the OBX8 here, wow. which is the new version. Yeah. And Tom signed this, and he actually wow. sent me a video of him signing it. Nice. And he said, "Jimmy Jam, here's I got your new synthesizer right here." There it is. And uh, and it was so cool. And we just did the music for this show, uh, this Hulu show called Unprisoned. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time we had done. As I think I mentioned to you earlier, we're definitely into doing things we haven't done before. Yeah. We had never scored episodic television before. Yeah. So when we got the call about this show and they said it takes place in Minneapolis and um, it would be cool if you guys wanted to do the music for it. And we said, yeah, we'd love to do the music for it. And we did. But the first thing I got was right when I got this. So I was able to duplicate all the authentic sounds from back in the day. And then the uh, Arp Omni from back in the time days once again. So any of those kind of sonics that we needed to do, we could actually recreate because wow. we have all the original equipment that does it. So cool. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was pretty cool. And then there's a few awards and stuff back there. The here. awards in the cases. A few, a few of them. A lot of them are... Someone was doing a performance on this. Huh? Someone was doing a vocal performance. Oh, yeah. To... So we were working... Yeah, there's a girl named um, uh, Raven Lene. Raven Linnae? Raven Linnae. Raven, Raven, okay. Raven Linnae. She's, she's a new, she's a sort of a new artist, but she's actually had an album out uh, for about a year. Yeah. And her single that she did uh, with Steve Lacey. Oh, nice. Is actually number one on the, on the R&B charts this oh, week. Oh, no way. So we were working with her earlier uh, in the week, and I said, how cool is it to be in the studio working on new music with a number one record on the chart? Yeah. How cool is that? You know, and she was. She Good was for so her. Cool. Yeah. So she's cool. I'm gonna write that down. DJ DJ Dahi is involved with nice. the new project. Nice. So he was over here, and we were all hanging out to stuff, and we came up. Dahi's with, awesome. Dahi's awesome. I so we came him. up with some 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 really cool stuff. But that's the fun thing. There's so many artists. Like people go, who haven't you worked with that you want to work with? 
And it's like so many of them are people that we don't even know. Yeah. They yeah. get we get turned on to them. Um, you know, people go, have you heard this or you heard that? And it's like we reach out to them and then they're like, hey, we want to let's do something. It's like, yeah, let's do something. Let's go. Yeah. And uh, and it's also great having kids who, you know, like Max, who's 23, um, who's so musically, you know, and so I'll go to the studio and I'll, he'll go, who are you working with today? And I'll go. Oh, DJ Dahi's coming by. He's, oh, I love DJ Dahi or whatever. Or there'll, there'll be certain people that have actually uh, mentored him at school. At yeah. Oh, no way. That's goes. awesome. And he loves that. He, there's somebody, I can't remember who it was. There was somebody I was working with and he said, oh, he did a seminar for us at school and he liked my song and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, cool. So that kind of stuff happens all the time. But yeah, there's a few few things in here. Les I, Paul Award. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Yeah, that was that was. Um, we actually got. I'm trying to think. Is that the one we actually got? I think we actually got guitars. Wow. From it too, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Even though they didn't realize that you were doing all the guitars on keys, that's fine though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <They> didn't <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's okay. Probably. Yeah, we probably shouldn't. They, they, they might come and take that back. Actually. Which Grammy is that? <laughs> Oh, this is our first one. This is uh, that's this producer is of the year. Producer of the year. Wow. So that's the one from from '86, from the year '86. We won it in '87, but yeah, '86, and it shows we've been around for so long that we have one of those, which is the you know the old version of the Grammy with the you know with the wooden thing, which is a lot smaller, and then we also have the uh, the new version. Oh yeah. Also, and this is the this is actually the one from Shaka Khan that I was telling you about. Nice. Funk this. But it's pretty it's cool. heavy. Yeah, it's it's pretty hefty. How does it feel? It feels great. It's pretty hefty. <laughs> That's what it feels like to be Jimmy Jam. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Yeah. No, it's cool. It's so. Oh, yeah, you can you can drink out of it. That's why everyone does shots out of it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because they plug it right there, so it's yeah. per perfect little cup. Well, and, and and it actually, I shouldn't probably get in trouble if I yeah. show this, but you know this is in two parts. Oh, really? So this actually, yeah. So this actually screws off here. Oops. So yeah, that's the other. Oh yeah, there so, it yeah, is. It's ready to a, go. <laughs> yeah, it works, it works as a as a drink glass too. I would have a little tiny bowl of cereal. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a, actually a good idea. Just a little, just a little bit of cocoa pebbles or something. I like. That's yeah. actually a good idea. Try it. The other thing that's really cool about this is that because it takes a while for these to actually come. Yeah. To you, like people are just now getting theirs from this yeah, year's show. Yeah, I've been seeing the posts. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's almost like a surprise. But the other thing that's really cool is the box that it comes in. Yeah. Um, because it's this form-fitting foam thing. And a lot of people do the foam part, and they paint them, and they do like different things. They almost create artwork out of them. Nice. And uh, somebody I was talking to the other day, oh, it was uh, uh, Doug Davis, who's Clive Davis's son, who's our attorney. Oh, nice. His daughter <laughs> had actually taken his Grammy box, because he actually won a Grammy. And he uh, he had the Grammy boxes, and I think she was wearing them for slippers or something. And then she had it for a hat <laughs> and all kinds cute. of stuff. And I said, people get creative with the That's boxes. That's so cute. The Grammys come in, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, you can flex in new exactly. ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yep, and be stylish about it. This is so cozy. Yeah. No, yeah. it's it's great. It's, it's a thick carpet. Yeah. yeah. I spend so much time up here, and uh, it's just, yeah. It, it just feels, feels good. Like, it feels like home. It feels good. Yeah, it's By nice. the way, I'll show you the. I'll show you the. Uh, I was telling you about that. Let's see. But I'm gonna show you the. Uh, like the classic. The classic sound. What's cool is, like for instance, C5. Uh, on an OB8 is the same sound as C5 on here. So if I played C5 on this, it would be this one. Or, uh, right? So that's like that was how Prince told you to play it, right? For yeah. Got to be better. Yeah, got to be better. Got to be better than the better. record. Got to be better. But for us, it's uh, it's that same. It's still C7, which is the uh, the forest funk, which is this sound. And then when we did 
No One's Gonna Love You, which was, uh... Right, but it was that holding, that <laughs> subtle hold that people uh, heard. People caught on to. Exactly. And then, last but not least, I showed, uh, uh, let's see, which one was it? Yeah. So, uh, everybody talks about what have you done for me lately. Yeah. And so, uh, I was telling uh, my dean, he was like, man, what is that bass line on? What have you done for me lately? And I said, ironically... Nobody can find it because it's not a bass part. So it's basically steel drums, right? So it's that's the that's the sound, steel drums. But what happens is if you play it low, you get wow. <laughs> so anyway, so this is so good. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. anyway, God. Those are the those are the kind of things, and then the, and then the uh, the the uh, Arp Omni, which is still, you know, like for cool, like uh, so. Uh, hold on, I need a I need a better bass sound on this end. Let's see, I need what do I need on this? I need. Well, we can go. Funny thing is, we can go to far as funk which is the one I said before, which is this, right? Which is the, right, that sound. But as soon as you do this to it, as soon as you put the, put that on there, go to unison, let's see. So now we got that. And now we have just basically like just be good to me, right? right? Or you have cool by the time. Right? Wow. So that's what changed Mike Dean's life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. <laughs> so it's just it's it's fun having the you know the tools to do Man. it. So we can go back there and do it, or we can do new stuff. Or I love how intentional you are. You know exactly how to get to exactly where you need to be. Yeah. Well, I've been doing it. I just I just try not to forget it. I know it. Yeah. I just I'm just, nowadays I just I just want to remember it. And then the last thing that's kind of cool is so back in the time days, back in '81. Yep. I'm gonna go right here. Yep. And I told you I couldn't afford you know initially the guitar. Yeah. When I could finally afford a guitar. This is the time wow. guitar. Wow. And I only used it on one song, which was the stick, which was the first song we did, and I did a solo on it, right? But the cool thing about this was this keyboard got totally mangled when we uh, moved from Minneapolis to LA. Yeah. This whole uh, section here was all just off, just broke no off, just way. nothing happening. So a guy named Rory Kaplan, who's helped us with a ton of stuff with our uh, immersive room and a whole bunch of different stuff. I hit him one day, he mentioned to me Moog something, and I said, hey, do you know somebody in Moog that knows how to fix? I said, I have a, a liberation that's like totally messed up. He said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. I said, okay, cool. And I, I've got to remember the guy's name, but anyway, he comes over, he takes a look at it, he says, well, all the wires are still intact, it's just we just need to rebuild this section here. Anyway, he takes it for a month, he brings it back, it's totally fixed, totally refurbished. He had the whole thing finished wow. off like a new keyboard. So this is my time keyboard from 1981. So, you know, 40, what, 42 years ago. Dude, that's incredible. In perfect, in perfect it looks, shape, it looks plays perfect. great. Yeah. It's, am it's absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, it's really cool. I just wow. did a thing for Moga, and then I just did a thing for Moga the other day. They have a new, uh, a new, uh, uh, Minimo coming out. Yeah, it's a limited edition uh, type of thing, and I just filmed some stuff for that, which is pretty amazing. So I love getting to know the the manufacturers and the people that make it, because like I say, those are the tools that they're giving us to create the music. Yeah, you know, hundred percent. So I mean, anyway. you clearly cherish these things. You've had them 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Oh yeah, no, it's 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 a big deal, 
and they've all been wow. it's but i do love it's it amazing. because it's particularly because this one i have pictures of it i, I guess i can sh i'll send you some pictures yeah. of it all broken apart yeah where this thing looks at a couple of times we almost threw it away a couple of times wow. and i just i just held on held on to it and i just remember one day it was up on a shelf and i just said I think you can do something with this and Rory was like, I know the guy. Yeah. I know the guy that can fix that. I'm Incredible. Like, yeah. So it was cool. Jimmy Jam cares. I do. <laughs> Jimmy Jam cares. I do. Yeah. <laughs> man, yeah. thank you for showing up. Absolutely, this, man. This is yeah. incredible to see. Cool. It's, yeah, it humanizes everything you do. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I love it. And it feels so comfortable in here. Yeah. It's so non-intimidating. It's so like. No, it's just a yeah. hang. It's a hang space. We are making it. It's a, yeah, we are making it. We are it. making it. No, it's a, it's a hang space, and yeah. that to me is really important, yeah. particularly when you spend so much time in a place. Yeah. You just want it to be comfortable. And uh, a lot of times we get in here and we just have conversations, and then the conversations turn into songs. Yeah. You know? Because we'll, we'll sit here, we'll have you know, a couple of people on the couch, a couple of people in the chair, we'll just start having a conversation, and as the conversation is going, a lot of times I'll just sit and start playing. Mm. And then somebody will go, Wait, what is that? What is that right yeah, there? And it's yeah. like nothing. Just you know, I'm just playing. And then you know, like Raven will take the microphone and just start singing something into it. And it's like, oh, okay, let's figure this out. You know, so organic. Yeah, yeah. But that's what's fun about it. You know, yeah. you wake up with you know a blank slate, and you kind of feel like there's going to be an idea that comes. You don't really know what it's going to be. Yeah. But there's going to be the the chance of an idea. Yeah. Coming. Definitely. And you just want to make sure you capture it if you can. Yeah. Jimmy Jam, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Words of wisdom. <laughs> My guy. <laughs> Go on in there. The immersive room. The yeah, so room. the story here was, um, so about eight years ago, um, we started working with uh, DTS on a technology. They had headphone technology. They had 11.1 technology. We started working with them. We, uh, Hans Zimmer was involved, a uh, few other people. And we started working with them on different stuff. And uh, the company went through some changes. They changed the philosophy of what they were doing and, and all of that. So the guy, one of the founders of the company, just said, you guys should just build your own room. And so we said, okay, cool. So literally we built our own room. Like we did it out of scratch between uh, Rory Kaplan and, uh, and a guy named Brand Biles, who used to be engineer back with, in the Stevie Wonder days with mm -hmm. uh, Bob Margolef and those guys. Yeah. And uh, basically he had stuff left over from a studio. He had, we just kind of put it up. We put the trusses up. We hung the speakers. We did the whole thing. And we basically just built it ourselves. Yeah. And so what was cool about it was um, we were able to develop uh, a technology uh, along the lines of what Dolby's doing and what uh, Sony's doing with 360 and that kind of thing. Yep. We, we personally think ours is a little better. Nice, but, nice. Um, but the idea is, is just to really let the sound uh, really be immersive sound without the, the, uh, the tricks, yeah. right? Uh, and we, uh, it was interesting because our analogy about it or at least my analogy of it was like when 3D first happened and you went to the movies, when you walked out the movie, you weren't talking about the movie. You were talking about, oh, the ball almost hit me and the, something was flying at me and whatever. And to me, that was the gimmick of it. The first movie that really I felt immersed in was Avatar, mm -hmm. the first Avatar, where you walked out talking about the experience that the movie gave you. So that's the way we wanted to do with music. We wanted to have that experience where it made you feel like that, not only in speakers, but also in headphones. Yeah.